Hi, my name is Chris Swift. I'm with Swift Trading Company. On behalf of my partner, Chris Winward, and our sales assistant, Sean Gammon, welcome to Shooting the Bull. We appreciate you taking this time to be with us, and we're looking at the weekly feeder cattle index today and looking at the difference between the optimism that the futures is presenting and the current present market of what reality is suggesting. So we see our chart here, and we can tell that we're in a hesitation point right now. We've been moving up from the 150 area up almost a little over 180, and now we've consolidated. After what we believe has been a five-wave move, we should expect a three-wave move back down of some magnitude, but we're not real sure what. And that's why I've got two levels out here. One would just simply be an adjustment in price, something that might bring more profitability into your operation or just the factors of the uh, corn market having moved, whatever that case may be. But we know that the next three months, we're going to have lesser uh, hay supplies on hand, and we won't quite be to grass pasture yet. So within the next three months, we're going to have some real issues of here. Is can the cattle uh, background or hold out a little bit? Can the cow calf dry hold out a little bit until we can get to the grass uh, time frame on here? So if it's just a slight adjustment in price, maybe we stay right where we are. Maybe we end up softening down to the 170 level. If there is something else that materializes economically that might cause more of a down return in the cattle market, then it could be back to the previous wave four levels around the 150 area. So when we look at the August and November futures now between 204 and 212, and we expect the cattle feeders to bid cattle really, really high, how much more and above do these levels that the summer and, and fall represent will a cattle feeder be willing to pay? We don't know that yet. But what we do know is right now there is a basis spread between the index and the fall, last of summer, early fall cattle that seems to be very profitable to cattle feeders. One of three things between now and the end of November is going to happen you're either going to see the cash market take off and it's going to move up to the levels represented by the futures market or the futures market moves down to the level of where the cash index is where they meet somewhere in the middle. So if we already look at the way they are priced in the back months, each consecutive month is a little bit higher. There's a carry in that. So we believe that as the futures market expires, each one of them expire, March, April, May, and then August, it's going to show that chart just keep climbing up. But do we see the index climb up to meet those same levels? And that's why we're having this discussion. So we're going to back up just a little bit, and we're going to try to see if we look at between A and B and where we are coming down here for the C and the two leg, potentially if we look at another time frame when the market was very bullish, are we at this level or are we at this level or are we at this level? And that's where the real important because most cattle feeders, most cattle men believe that this is where we are. We're at the bottom of this cycle. Unfortunately, I'm not real sure that we're at the bottom of this cycle and we may only be in the middle of it because what we don't know is how much more liquidation that there could potentially be. And there could be a lot more than what you think. Even those people saying, oh, there's no more cows around. They've already sold off all their heifers. There are a lot more cattle that can be sold, especially if the dairy industry were to start to become an impact on that and something to put demise to the dairy industry that would possibly cause their prices to go down too. So we go back over to where we are right now and we look at these real premiums and the purpose of this video right here is to show you where these prices are, where we are today, and what's the likelihood over the next 11 months, moving back up in uh, 10 months, moving back up into this area, knowing that you're going to be marketing cattle all through that time frame, not just necessarily buying these calves today and then going to market them all on the October, November board. Understand that you've got a follow through repetition of cattle that'll be marketed all the time. So, when you want to market cattle, where's the highest price available? It's the futures. It doesn't matter what contract month you look at, the futures market is offering premiums. So 
we have to make some decisions and we have to make some very serious marketing decisions. And what we know that with the premium that we have of the futures market, and when we curtail a hedge to a fence option strategy, a synthetic futures where we buy the at the money put and we sell the out of the money call, producing unlimited risk to the upside above the call strike price, unlimited profit potential below the put strike price. Anywhere in between those two strike prices, if the market expires, there may be some premium available, there may be no premium available, and you may have lost 100% of the option premium that you initially paid. In having transacted some of that business today, I found that from the August contract to the November, we could put spreads that increase the profitability by as much as 10 to $12 over the futures price that is currently existing. That produced widths of at least twenty to thirty dollars on the down to the most minimal price level, and up to thirty-five to forty dollars on the top side. So when we consider how high can cattle prices go, we know it's unlimited. When we look at how low they can go, we know it's to zero. But where is the market really going to be? And if we consider the amount of inventory that we've lost throughout the last couple of years, the shape in the cattle feeder. It is very, very possible that you see feeder cattle prices rise to 204, 212, whatever the representation by the futures are. And if you are hedged at those levels and the index moves up to those levels, you gain the entire basis spread between it. You just don't make any more money once the underlying futures moves above the short call strike price. So, when I get through with this, it's your job to put pencil to paper. Put these outrageous prices that are offered to you in the future and see how profitable they are. And then think to yourself, how much more would that market have to go up to make a 5%, 10%, 20% difference in my payout on those cattle? That's what we're trying to figure out. The one thing we don't know is where are we in this particular bull market? Are we right here in the June, July timeframe of 2013, 12, excuse me, 2012, or are we already at the end of 2013 here, fixing to start the big bull market up? What I can tell you is even if it is going to start the big bull market up, we don't know how high it can go in the 10 months that we've got, nor any of the shorter time frames where we're marketing today all the way into May or even just as low as August. The one thing that I'll tell you to watch out for is that if you are marketing your feeder cattle on the last trading day of the futures, you will receive full convergence of basis. For those of you that are going to market inventory on the May, June, or July video sales, having to use the August futures, there may just be a different way to use them instead of using the synthetic or the fence options hedge. So how we do it might end up being as important as what we do, but just reviewing these charts right here and looking at the spread difference between what we have in the optimism of the futures versus the profit margins of the cattle feeder when he's paying 212, 204, 218, whatever that case may be, what does that project for fat cattle? What does that project for the beef market? And what kind of price is that going to make to the retail consumer? All of those factors have to be taken, taken into consideration as we push this market higher. So I won't go into the specifics of what you know each one of these contract months can be, but I will urge you to write down what it is that you're going to be marketing. See how close to the expiration of a contract month you can get to marketing that inventory. And then let Swift Trading help you market that inventory through the futures at a higher price that may or may not be available to you in the future. So we always appreciate you viewing this. We hope that you take something from it. And if we do, we would appreciate you trading your business through us. So on behalf of Chris Winward, Sean Gammon, and myself, I'm Chris Swift. Thank you for letting me shoot the bull with you for a little while this afternoon.